Hey, what is going on YouTube? It has been a minute. I apologize. I can explain myself. First of all, don't worry about how dirty my car looks. I know you can see it on the windows and everything. It's pretty dirty. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna wash it tomorrow. All right, so first things first. This video was actually supposed to already be up about a month ago, two months ago maybe. And you know, me being dumb, I thought it was recording and I literally recorded this entire video. It was about 15 minutes long and I never hit record. So um, yeah, after that happened, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna take a break. I'm not doing this. I'm not about to record another video, but not actually record it. So I'm making sure it's recording right now. I'm making sure I need to get a video out to y'all. So welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Ronnie. This is Ronnie's Reviews. I make videos on my car. I have a 2019 Dodge Charger GT. I film all the mods that I've done to it. You know, a bunch of different type of videos, but it's, it's mostly about cars and such. I am planning on upgrading pretty soon onto a wide body, whether it be a scat pack or a red eye. Who knows? I'm gonna try for both. But I'll at least we get a I'll at least get a wide body scat pack for sure. Other than that, like I said, welcome to the channel. If you are returning and you've seen all my other videos, I appreciate your continued support. Welcome back. Now, like I said, if you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free. I'm gonna say that in every single video because it's true. There's really no reason not to subscribe to my YouTube channel or really anybody else's, especially if you watch them more than once. Now, if I can, I get it. If you're just watching for you know one time, you stop by, watch one video, and that's it. You're never watching again. I get that. All right. But even then, show some support. It's free. Why not? You know, help 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 somebody out today. Other than that, like I said, let's just go ahead and jump into the video. You see the title? What do I pay for my 2019 Dodge Charger GT? Now, I kind of made a video on this already back, you know, really when I first got my car. It was about a year ago, maybe a little bit more. But it wasn't necessarily detailed around, you know, how much I pay per month, how much I put down, you know, it was more or less of the process of financing it. If you haven't seen that video, the link will be in the description below, or you can just look it up or go to my channel. It's quite a ways down. I'm pretty sure I changed the title of it. I'm sure it's titled something like how to deal with a bad salesman or, or something like that. It's a pretty good video, pretty good watch. You should go check that out. Some really good information in there. So if you're looking to buy a new car, finance a car, whatever the case might be, go check that video out. It's a pretty good video. Other than that, make sure you stay through this whole video because I will be giving some pretty good information. Maybe it'll help you out. Maybe it'll help somebody else out that you know. If you know anybody that is trying to finance a car, you know, link them to my channel. Share, share this video with your friends. Share this video to, to other people that you know are trying to get a car or have questions about cars or anything like that. I appreciate the support. Go ahead and sub while you're here. Like I said, just share the video. But let's jump into the video. So, like I said, I drive a 2019 Dodge Charger GT. I got it brand new. And before I did anything, the dealership had it pretty discounted. It was down to about 26,000 and some change. MSRP, I think they range around 31,000. So 26,000 before, you know, taxes and all that. That's a pretty good deal actually, especially for what, what the car comes with. So if anything, especially for a GT, you really shouldn't pay anything above 30,000 unless it just, it's like completely optioned out with you know, the Harman Kardon sound system, navigation, heated cool seats, all that stuff. Then, you know, 31,000, 32, I'd probably say be a good deal. Anything more than that, you might as well just get an RT, you know? So I financed 31,000 out the door. And the only reason I had to do that was because I had negative equity on my previous vehicle, which was a Nissan Altima. I had about 15,000, 15,000. Jeez, can you imagine 15,000? No, it was 1,500. Fifteen hundred dollars in negative equity, so twenty six, pretty much twenty seven thousand plus fifteen hundred. That brings it up to twenty eight fifty, and then with tax title license, it was you know brings it up to around thirty one thousand. And so what I find is I didn't go through the dealership. My credit is not the best right now. It is rebuilding. It is pretty good now, but at the time it wasn't the best. It was around like a mid to low six hundred, which isn't terrible, but 
you know, anything above 700 is, is really, really good. That's where you want to be is above 700. So I tried going through the dealership. They were telling me that it was going to be 18% because that's the highest you can go on a new car purchase was 18%. And I wasn't having that. I'm not about to finance 18%. Now, the I finance 10%. And that's still not the best, but it's definitely a lot better than 18%. I'm not about to finance a car for 18%. You're not going to pay that off. And But like in my case, I really wouldn't have minded because I'm trading it in anyway. I'm not trying to pay this off. Like I said, I'm buying a new car pretty soon, and really in a couple months, as soon as I can. So, you know, all I really gotta wait on right now is just my credit needs to get a little bit better, just a little bit, and then I'm gonna jump on the deal as soon as I get a good deal. But I financed 10%. I didn't go to the dealership because they were trying to haggle, and they, it was a long process. Like I said, go check out the other video. But what I did, I went through a credit union, and that was the easiest thing I could have ever done or gone through. Literally, I just told them I needed 29,000 and they gave me the percentage and such and that was it. Like they didn't really ask for much. They're like, okay, you can do this at this percentage for this many months. And then I was like, well, actually I need 31,000. They're like, okay, we can do this at this many months. I was like, well, can you do 10% at 72 months? And they're like, yes, that was it. It was that simple. So. 10%, 72 months on a $31,000 car. I'm paying $592 on the dot, pretty much. $592. Now, there are people that pay that much for a scat pack, but their case is they have better credit than me. My credit wasn't terrible, but it wasn't the best. $592, I think, for a brand new car isn't really that bad, especially if you have plans on trading in pretty soon and or if you have plans on just building your credit and then refinancing the car. My case, I'm trading it in. So, 10%, 72 months, 592 a month. You know, that's really not that bad. I, at the time, don't pay my insurance. My dad still helps with my insurance, so I really don't have to worry about that. But if you're curious on the insurance, so I'm 23 right now. I financed this car at 21, I believe. I think I was 21, I'm pretty sure. No, I think I was 22. I'm turning 24 this year, so I was 22. It was my first car purchased by myself and 10% in 72 months, 592 a month, not that bad. I'm pretty sure the insurance is around 200 to 250, if I'm not mistaken. It shouldn't be much more than that though because it is a V6 and they still do consider it a family sedan because it's a four door. So total, if you're paying everything by yourself, and you went go the way that I do, and you have the same credit score and stuff, you'll be looking at, I usually just range up my monthly payment to 600. So 600 plus the 250, let's say it's 250, you're gonna be looking at around 850 for insurance and car payment. That is a bit much, if you can't afford it, obviously don't do it. If you can't afford that much, get something used. Now, they tried to get me to get something used whenever I did my deal, but the, the used Charger GTs for when I was looking for a 2019 was like 25,000 for something that had 15,000 miles. And the car I got was brand new and it was 26,000. So why would I take a thousand dollar difference for something that's been used? And it literally doesn't make sense. So I was like, I'm not trying to hear all that. I don't want to use car. Just give me a good deal. And they wouldn't. So that's why I went to the credit union because I went to like five, six different dealerships and they were all talking a bunch of noise and they really weren't trying to help me. They were just trying to get a deal for themselves. So like I said, 592 a month, really not that bad. Could be better. If my credit score was better, I could really be paying 350, 400 a month maybe. Probably like 400 would be would be a good good range. 400, 450 max. Like I said, my credit was the best, 10%. It's not great, it's not terrible. You wanna to try to stay under 10% if you can because anything above 10% is gonna take you a really long time to pay off. So I would say if you're looking to get a new car, especially a, a Charger, a GT, because that's what this video is about, whether it's a 19 or a 20 or a 2021 or whatever the case might be, They'll be all about the same price range, so this video will be, you know, some helpful information to you. But like I said, 592 a month, 
72 months, 10%, 31,000 out the door. I mean, I wasn't really too worried about how much I was paying. I mean, obviously I want to get as low as a monthly payment as possible, but I knew I could afford it at the time. And I knew that my long-term goal wasn't to keep this and pay it off because that would have taken a long time. My goal was to have it for a year or two and trade it in, get a scat pack or maybe the red eye if I can, you know, somehow work a deal with that, then I'll do that. But as soon as I financed, that was my goal. And my goal wasn't, oh, this is the end this is the end goal right here. This is what I want. No. Of course it's what I wanted, but it's not where I'm trying to be. So you know, and you have to think about that too. Whenever you're going in to finance a car, maybe the GT or an SXT is your end goal. Maybe that's all you want. Maybe that's all you really need. If that's the case, go for it. You know, if, if the deal is right and you can afford it, why not? I'm sure, you know, it, it really took me a long time to try to go through with the deal because I was thinking on it a lot when, you know, in re reality, I probably could have done something sooner. But if you find yourself thinking about getting a new car or, you know, whatever the case might be, a new phone, whatever, if you're thinking on it every single day, if you know that you can afford it, why not just do it? You might as well. If it's gonna make you happy, do it. That's really all that matters. But who cares what everybody else thinks? I know people sometimes are probably a little scared to get a V6 because, you know, the V8 community is a dickhead as a whole and they try to shit on you for having a V6, don't listen to them. I mean, it's your car, who cares? Why Why try to break the bank of trying to get something just because you don't wanna get shit on for having a V6? And in reality, V6 low key can be better than the V8s. I mean, they have better gas mileage. Some of them sometimes last longer because the transmission doesn't take as much wear and tear as a V8, especially with the people that just punch their shit daily. You know, I've got 50,000 miles on mine right now. I haven't had a problem, not even one, you know? And that's the good thing about V6s. Some, sometimes, I mean, you could you could get lucked out and you could have a V6 that has problems after 10,000 miles. You, you really just never know with, with certain cars. But don't let anybody stray you from getting a V6 if that's what you want or if that's all you need. Get what you want, do what I did, you know? Make it your own. If you can't afford to get the top of the line or the most specced out car, get a base model and make it your own. Spec it out yourself. That way you can customize it however you want. My car didn't have red seats when I got it. I put them in. It had black cloth seats, stock. My car was completely stock when I got it. There was nothing crazy about it. The only thing was crazy was, I mean, crazy, but the only thing that was like different about it was the hood, but that's just because it's a GT and that's what it comes with. Everything else I did myself, you know? So. If, if a V6 is what you want, whether it's GT or SXT, get it. There's no point in waiting. If you know that you can afford it and you want to do the deal and you've been thinking on it every day, go ahead and get it. Fuck what everybody else is talking about. Think about what you want, what's gonna make you happy, do it. If it's gonna make you happy, just go ahead and do it. Might as well. But like I said, my car, 31 out the door, 72 months, 10%. Could've got a better deal, maybe. Is that an ideal deal? No. What, what you really want to try to shoot for would be 60 months. And if you can get under 6%, you'd be looking really, really good. Obviously the best you could get is probably like one, 2%, but not everybody can get that. You know, if you can try to try to fight for, for under 10%, I mean, really anything under 10 is pretty decent actually. So if you can do 60 months, do 60 months because you'll be paying less, especially if you're trying to pay it off. If you're not paying it off, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing 72 months. You just might be, you might have a negative equity when you trade it in. I'm gonna have negative equity, I already know. I'm just gonna be saving up money so where I, when I do trade it in, I can cover that negative equity and then really just finance whatever the car is that I'm getting. So if you can, go for 60 months and try to get 10% or less. If you can't do that, maybe wait and, and make sure you can get that. You know, try the credit union option because they'll usually give you a lower credit uh, or a lower finance than uh, a dealership might. You know, you can try that. Or worst case scenario, work on your credit. Over time, it'll get better. 
and then when the time is right, when you have a good enough credit score, and then you get a good deal, take it. As soon as you get a good deal and you know that you can afford it, and it's good and works for you, take it. Don't let someone try to talk you out of it, especially if you want to do it. Like, my dad was trying to talk me out of doing this deal, but I knew, I already knew I was gonna do it either way. He wasn't gonna talk me out of it. And I see where he's coming from, and the people that try to talk you out of it, yes, they are thinking about your money, and they're trying to think, you know, make sure, they're really just trying to look out for you and make sure you're, you know what you're doing, and they try to make sure that you can afford it. Because if, if you can't afford it, let's say you go into a deal, you finance 18% for 72 months, and now you're paying $700 for a V6 that you're never gonna pay off. And then when you go to trade it in, you're not gonna be able to trade it in because you're down $10,000 in negative equity. You know, if that's the case, don't do it, you know? But anything other than that, if you can afford it and it seems right, do it. It's gonna make you happy, might as well. But other than that, that's that's what I financed for my car. 31,000, 72 months, 10%, 592 a month. Insurance was, was probably around 250. I, I really couldn't tell you to be honest, but I doubt it's more than 250. So that's that. Like I said, if you haven't seen my other video where I completely break down the whole process of going with a credit union, that video will be in the link in the description below. You can also just go to my YouTube channel, scroll through the videos. It's you know pretty far down. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's titled how to deal with a bad car salesman or, or something like that because you, you'll definitely want to see it and, and it'll really open your eyes to how shitty car salesmen are, especially when they're supposed to be trying to sell to you. Some of these car salesmen act like they don't want to sell to you and I don't know why. It beats me. I, 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 re I really don't know why. You would think that you would go into a car dealership, they haven't sold a car in a couple days, that they'd want to make a deal. No, they don't care about that. All they care about is money and trying to upsell you and You'll just have to go watch the video. It it really is it's wild what, what they did. So go check that video out. Like I said, if you're new, please sub. It is 100% free. I have a lot of content coming to the channel. I did order a new camera. So the video is about to start looking a lot better. And I'm about to be able to start doing a lot more as well. Because right now I just film with my phone. So that camera should be in, I think it's coming in like a week. So look out for the new videos with the new camera better quality better content better videos all 2021 this is gonna be a big year not just for i feel like it's gonna be a bigger big year for my channel but it's gonna be a big year for you too keep your head up keep thinking positive whatever you're fighting through you'll get through it there's better days you know if you're somewhere that you're not happy with whether it's work whether it's car you're driving whatever the case might be You'll get to where you want to be. You just have to keep pushing for it. Don't, don't give up. Don't settle. Settling never gets you anywhere. So keep pushing. Strive for a great 2021. I appreciate you for checking out the channel. If you're coming back and you've seen my videos before, I appreciate your continued support. If you haven't, please subscribe. I'm pretty sure still like 80% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. It's free. Just might as well subscribe. Other than that, like I said, I'll catch y'all pretty soon. I do have new camera coming. So better videos, more videos, better content. Be patient with me, they're coming, all right? Other than that, like I said, appreciate you for checking out the channel. I'm Ronnie's Reviews. I'll catch y'all in the next one. I'm out.